Guys, I did it again. I made an absolutely beautiful holster and drilled it wrong. It was supposed to be for this. Don't work. Back in the press it goes. One heat press, one vac table, two heat press, two vac table. Double the fixtures means double the output. Double the tooling, double the output. Hmm. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Again, here with Faltech, and it has been a very long day of bending plastic. It is currently 12.03 in the morning, Tuesday, I think. Um, we're going to be doing, I'm doing more builds. I'm going to keep going. I think this is the last build of the night, or at least part of it. Um, I'm going to at least get it prepped, possibly in the press. We'll see how far I get. I am pretty damn tired. But anyways, um, I got three orders for the FN 545 510. So if you didn't know, that's actually the same holster. The 10 millimeter and the 45 are the same. Uh, I have a brand new mold from uh, Multi Molds. Uh, Tony Katner, guy does phenomenal work. I'm going to modify this just a little bit to be... Uh, uh, to, to create a better fitting holster, uh, cause I know, um, thread protectors come in a variety of sizes. So I'm going to cut off the thread protector and then I'm going to thread it. That way I can go ahead and do my socket hack and I don't have to worry about anything. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going. I'm just going to cut it right on the bandsaw and, um, we're going to go ahead and prep it. I already washed it. If you guys didn't know. When you get brand new molds, there's something called mold release agent on it. It's a spray, it's a lubricant, and that will cause your tape not to stick. So if you guys are pulling your hair out because state, state, tape isn't sticking to your molds, I go ahead and clean it with Brake Clean because I buy this by the case, obviously, because I work on cars too. And uh, then you can also wash it with 97% isopropyl or higher, doesn't matter. Um, and uh, what I do after that is I dry it or you could put it, you know, hit it with your heat gun or stick it in your uh, heat press just to let it sit and let the heat go to it. Um, but we're going to do a couple things to this. Um, I am going to cut part of the site channel off. I'm not going to worry about it at this moment. I'm going to do it later. Um, but let's cut this off and let's prep it. We're going to add a couple things to it so we can make, uh, like I said, better holster. So moving on. this all set go ahead let's see here start a pilot and we'll try and get that as best as the center as we could looks pretty good the pilot. Let's open it up a little bit more. And I'm doing this so it doesn't crack. And then we're going to open it up to our final size, which is 5 16 which is actually too big for the recommended size of what we're actually doing. But I have found this works the best. So I'm going to go ahead and do this over my trash can. and clean the hole do that so it's easier to uh to do all right now we're going to take our easy lock 
which uh, I get them right on Amazon, uh, part number 400-008. You've seen me use these before. Uh, it says to use a 17 64th drill, but like I said, this works better for drilling into the epoxy because these are actually made for wood. So, and the reason why I chamfered the edge is just because it, it helps it a little bit. Just get started. And you could countersink it pretty deep or just put it to the edge. It's whatever you want, whatever you can fit. There we go right there. And like I said, might have to shorten the screw, but or the bolt. there all right uh, so this is actually going to have a TLR 7 and there's going to be two different holsters to this setup so we got the TLR 7 here with the universal one key go ahead and get that on like I said we're gonna be doing two holsters And it's going to be with QLS fork and the Spetsgear Level 2 hood. So this is going to be sitting here and this is going to be sitting here. And we're going to have a mighty fun time. Uh, black right hand. So it's going to nothing really special now. And then I'm going to do the same thing just outside the waistband. And that's going to be a completely different animal. And I'll show you again uh, on how we do that as well. The first thing I'm going to do is lay down some tape. Okay, that side right there. We could also cut right here as well because um, these are already more than enough. So, but uh, we might do it in this one, we might not. We shall see. purposes of this video we'll go ahead and just do that to show you that you don't have to you could do that you do it any way you want on your build on your holster thing because we're going to be adding this right here anyway so it literally does not matter all right so now i'm going to block out the tlr7 and to do that we're going to use our Aluminum flashing, and I have a new piece of blocking that I made, but uh, I must have. Oh, I hope I didn't throw it out with a piece of tape because it kind of took a couple minutes to make it, but I could always make another one. I, I cut up a dime to fit perfectly right here, but I'll have to find that. All right, moving on. Oh, that's going to go this way. If we want to, we can cut that out so this sits flat. Let's see how that is there. It is a little bit higher. Um, that will actually help us, though. We're just going to put something right here. So there's no wiggle. And I don't want the blocking to be higher than the flashlight because when it wraps around it, it's gonna add retention. So I'm gonna drop it down ever so slightly. Okay. 
And remember, this is going to be uh, covered with the QLS, so it don't matter. And I'm just going to put this here so it doesn't flop when we turn it over. Like this. And this side is going to be our retention side. And so that means this is going to go this way. And it's going to be the same thing. We're going to put a piece here. Or what we can do is just chop that down. But if we chop it, we're going to have to modify it uh, every single time we build the holster. So I'd rather not do that. But worst case scenario, I'm going to do it. Um, which means I just buy another mold. But plenty of room in there to have the Kydex dip into it. You want to leave that free and clear. That way the Kydex goes down in. Again, with another set. Again, I do this nice and tight so the kydex doesn't go underneath it. Because if it goes underneath, you'll have a problem. And then I found that by connecting the back, it actually helps with the position of it, as in it doesn't like slide. So we'll see how that goes right there. And that's somewhat done. Like I said, though, I'm, I'm going to try and find that piece because that was a that was a brilliant piece. There's still a few more things to block in. We got to add this. We have to add this, and of course, we have to add this, and then we have to create our own retention plate. Because I do not have this one because I've never built this one before. This is the very first 510, uh, 545 holster we are doing. Yeah, I couldn't find it, so I just went and grabbed another dime, and I made another. I went ahead, took some shears, and I cut the dime. And if you notice, it sits like that. So instead of a circle, it now looks just like so. I feel like it matches the body line more, and that's why I started, started doing that. All right, still have a little bit more to do. And then here's <laughs> those pieces of dime. All right, now the crappy part is we're gonna have to build up, which is no big deal. It's just, like I said, crappy, but I do have a plethora of blocking already made. Um, let's see here. I'm just gonna get this so it's, there we go. And this, let's see here, I'm gonna line this up here. We know for a fact that this does not have uh, a hammer, so we don't have to worry about that. All right, right there. So I need blocking to go underneath that, which actually looks like we're going to do possibly that one. So I'll add that there because potentially the safari land can uh, go on that as well. Maybe if it's big enough. All right. So that's going to sit right there. Very very cool. For the future, I'm going to be ordering a uh, vacuum mold for this or create my own. But this is what I have right now. And it's going to be like another three weeks before I see this if I order it soon. So, And uh, there's a lot of... A lot of impatient people out there. I tell you what. All right. Oh, do that. And then this is going to sit. Yeah, pretty much right there. It's going to hit the end of that. Yeah, not too bad. All right, so this is going to sit right here. And I'm going to do a little bit extra. Uh, let's see here. Do I need extra blocking under it? I might need something. Probably this area right here build it up a little bit and 
And we want to make sure that we have enough space, which right there looks perfect. Um, and then we're going to lock the UBL down. Right, now we gotta move on to the other side. And on this side, obviously we have to mount this guy right here, but we have to see where we're gonna be. So we're gonna have to go down to about here, rough, roughly right about there. And that means I'm gonna have to find another piece of blocking. Ooh, that round one actually might work pretty good. Now, when you add like extra like this, it adds strength. And we're definitely gonna need some strength, so I'm gonna leave that there. Plus, not only does it leave strength, but it gives you character in the holster as well. Is it needed? Absolutely not. If you like the plain look of just the hardware, do that. All right, and then I'm gonna lock, lock that down right there. And only thing left to do now, let's move all this aside, it's the hardware, is retention. Let's get our stick. This is our uh, deep reach marker. They're specifically designed to trace. So let's get out our, our uh, wood. Dup, dup, da, 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 da. The FN 510 is out of the press, so you can see, I actually like the way that looks. Uh, but there it is right there with the TLR7, and this right here, it came out good. I think it's going to be a phenomenal holster. Now the sad part is, but also pretty good, uh, when we take this apart, uh, we only have to remove the accessories. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, do another holster because uh, no point of taking it apart when we have to do another one. But I have to make another retention plate because this is actually going to be an outside the waistband pancake style. And that one's going to be a good build. But it is currently 1.05 in the morning. And that means I am shutting down and I'm going to continue this in the morning. And welcome back for me. It is the next day. And now uh, we're going to continue this FN holster. But... Uh, if you notice, I cleaned off that bench right there because I shipped everything that I built yesterday, those 17 orders. Well, I ended up only shipping 16 because I just realized I built an order wrong. Uh, I usually go over the order after the fact and um, obviously before I build it and then after. And I completely missed that this holster, that this was the second attempt, has a gas pedal. So that won't work on it. So if you have a P320 full size with a PL3, I have it inside the waistband holster, uh, so I'm gonna have to rebuild that. Luckily, I have enough material to get that out. So, of course, here's attempt one. I messed up the holes because I wasn't paying attention. Two, I didn't read the damn order. And uh, you know what? It happens. So, um, but those are gonna go out. I'm gonna make another one of these today. Um, and uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. It's 64 degrees in the shop. It's gonna be 73 outside. So I'm gonna be building quite a bit inside, and then I got some outside chores to do. But um, let's get to building so 
uh, last night I took off all the stuff that we didn't need and I'm gonna go ahead and cut a brand new piece of uh, retention and then we're gonna throw it back in the press this is gonna be a pancake style with pancake loops I believe 175 which pancake loops are probably one of my favorite for outside the waistband I think it tucks it into the body a little bit more so I'm gonna be looking forward to uh, throwing this together because this is a, a beast of it of a handgun and they're brand new and uh, <laughs> you should have one all right, we got the bottom side in this press, and we have the top side in this press. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to get ready to do some uh, forming here, but I wanted to show you that is that dime. So you can see it flows a lot more, and there's no indent there for added retention because all of our retention is right there. Looks good. All right, the new one is in the press, and before I did that, I lined it all up so I know where to cut, but we're still gonna cut on the outside of the line, just in case, because a lot of times I find myself doing that and then coming in, but regardless, we went around. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be cutting right here, so we're gonna cut this part on this side, and so yeah, this should be coming out pretty good. So we're gonna come down after that threaded barrel, line it up, and then just like so, and then we'll come straight across and then go ahead and add some retention holes there we go drill 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 we should be good to go and these um i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to uh do a little gusset here no big deal let's get it done we are cut and ready to go but first thing that I do, so I'm going to go ahead, take the clear, and I mark the center of each hole, then I'll drill it, and what I'll do is we'll heat up the sight channel, open it up to about 90 degrees, rivet it in, or set it with eyelets, and then assemble the holster, and we'll be all set. And the reason why I'm doing that is that gusket will stop it from doing this. You see that little bit of a of a bend right there? That that bend right there, if I put another one here, it, it would probably add a little bit more strength. But with um, this, there will be virtually no flex. So we're going to be doing that. All right, here we are out of the press. As you see, I did... Uh, I heated up the side channel, unfolded it. I can't fold it until I get this out of here, uh, but I went ahead, I cut everything, I did the gusset. Now there's no flex, and we're going to set this aside because now we need to do this. So um, we're going to pull everything out of here and get to going. As you can see, the three-quarter inch piece of metal that I use is absolutely perfect because we're going to be doing uh, retention right here and right here. And uh, I brought out the pancake loops. And that is going to be right here as well. And I do have a set, I believe it's this one. Yep, so we're gonna do these right here and be perfectly okay with it. Well, it doesn't matter. This is one of those instances where um, this should have been carbon fiber. Uh, first one was not, and the second one is, so yeah. Okay, great, awesome. So, uh, I'm going to get the top off and uh, repress this. Joy. Now you guys get to learn something else new. Uh, if you separate the top layer, uh, I can now use this for another build, but I'm going to set this aside, and I could go ahead and just press this with the carbon fiber. All right, so uh, attempt two on this holster. It is in the press. We should be all set. Uh, I'm not really worried about how it's going to come out. Uh, when we bend the ears, if there's a little bit of uh, like a bubble in there, it's going to come out on its own when we do that bend. So I'm all set with that. Uh, so it is a little after noon. I just shut down the presses. While that is in the press, I'm going to go ahead and go grab lunch real quick and then get to um, come back in and finish those holsters to get them out and then move on to the next one. I'm going to build that other FN510 holster, and that's going to be a TLR1, so that should be uh, pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure if I'll film it or not, but it's going to be multicam black, so I'm going to have to get on the press uh, or on the printer and get some uh, stuff made up. So this is uh, it's going well, as long as I read before I build. See, like it was meant to be. It's out of the press. It looks good. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to finish this one up real quick. Uh, I did take everything off. I cut the sight channel off. I put it on for this reason where I'm just going to fold over it and then flatten the top of it. So actually it looks, uh, looks presentable. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I do that on the uh, um, strip heater. And once it's all set, I'll just add all the hardware and we'll be good to go on number one of two. And then we'll go ahead and work on this one. All right. So we got everything all set. And we got, check out that side channel. Super square. I use a side channel jig that I have. And uh, pretty much heat it up. Press it down in it. Perfectly flat. And like I said, it's square just like uh, how this would come out. Uh, so we went ahead. Like I said, I added this stuff. So all we got to do is uh, pretty much everything else. Before I go on, I'm going to set the retention. Make sure that's good. I might have to heat this up a little bit because the indent is pretty large, which is what we wanted anyway. Uh, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead. Let's get this. Let's get this in. Um, I'm doing uh, 3 8 spacers today just to try out, see how those work. I generally cut a little bit larger, but these are these are stiffer, so they'll, they'll hold, they'll have more pressure against them. So, and then I have to go find the mold because I set it down somewhere. And here we are. actually not terrible um, I am gonna loosen it up a little bit with the heat gun so we have more control uh, with this so I'm just gonna hit a little bit and then in and out uh, but as you can see and that's the reason why I cut the sight channel off too because that creates drag and it doesn't really work that well when you have it um, so that is uh, not bad like I said I'm gonna loosen up a little bit instead of loosening it up from here no big deal and then we'll go ahead and add in all of the accessories that we need for this holster all right, I actually really like where it is now. Right on that light right there. And uh, he has the ability to loosen it up if he wants to. But that, that is glorious. I like that. All right, so now we're going to go ahead uh, and we're going to install this and install that. Let's get the provided hardware. And like you see me do in every video, I will take out all the screws. Set those aside. One of the threaded posts it comes with, discard the, well not discard them, I save them. But then I swap them out for the uh, half inch ones. I'm gonna check this real quick. A Little bit of a split. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead, heat this up right here and uh, let it cool and then that'll stop this from doing, doing that. And some heat strategically placed on this bar right here with a little bit of rem oil will allow you to do that. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, set these half inch guys in here. All four of these are gonna get some blue thread locker. And remember, don't go, don't over tighten it because uh, unlike the WRS hoods, uh, when Spetscare makes these, they don't make them with like a standoff inside. And uh, that's why if you go too tight, it pinches it. WRS hoods, you don't have to. So if they combine WRS technology with, the, with this, they'd be golden. But just enough so it's snug and it's not gonna twist anywhere. There we go. And we'll go ahead, get this in here, mark where that's going to go, like so. Drill that with the same one, I believe that's 5 16 that we do our retention with. Don't forget to clean your inner hole, that way everything sits flush. And then go ahead and throw that on there. A magnetic tip stop being magnetic all right then I like to square that up that's good I don't like to play with it because um, every time you actuate it it could loosen that up so we'll leave that be and then we will swap to our hex and then grab that's not it Grab the hardware that came with the fork and grab the long guys. And 
And these have a lock washer built in. They grip so they don't come undone, which is the reason why I am not putting um, thread locker on it. All right, square it up. And there's holster number one for the FN57 with uh, TL, or 57, the FN545 and 510 with TLR7 and placement right here. So when you grab, you can go right off and then right to your placement as needed. And you can see how far it is. Ooh, that's not supposed to happen. Design flaw. Anyway, so there it is right there. And good to go. So there's one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let's do this one. The only problem we're gonna have with this one is the fact that it came apart because of the way it was built. Uh, generally, I like to keep this attached so it makes it e easier, uh, but we're gonna have to line everything up now. So no big deal. I'm going to set this aside in a bin. Yep, carbon fiber right hand. Third barrel, blah, 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 blah. All right, so this should be a good one as well. We're gonna take this, we're gonna set that inside, we're gonna set this over, and that's how we're gonna keep our alignment. And we'll go ahead and clamp that baby in. And that's where we know, and how we know, that it's gonna stay true and aligned. Uh, before I put everything back together, I marked right here if you can see that or not, and that is where our hand's gonna go. That is a decal. Okay, and we're gonna take the rest of this. This is a contour gauge. Square it up. And that'll give us where our loops go. Straight across. And we know we're gonna come up here, down like so, like that, and then we're gonna come over just like that. All right, so now what we need to do, let me move this over just slightly, is we need to take our pancakes, put them where they should go. The only drawback with the pancakes is uh, they only work on like a longer handgun. But we're going to do this exact setup right here. I'm not going to do the fifth hole. Don't need to. That'll give you a sharper angle. And we really don't want sharp angles on these. Okay. And then this is going to end right here. And then we're gonna come down and then are gonna come over here and do the same thing from this side. All right, and our retention, we're gonna have one right here and yeah, we can line them up with the holes for aesthetic purposes, right there and right there. And uh, while this is in place, I'm going to go ahead and drill these, and then we'll put the eyelets in them, and uh, we'll be all set. And what I'm going to do to help it so it doesn't move is after I drill the eyelet hole, I'll go ahead and throw an eyelet in it. Right, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to cut this right here and then get those in there. And with that mounted right there, I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to throw in that right there like I said only because this whole thing can move and I'm gonna go ahead and drill these two spots right right here I'll go a little bit ahead of that one only because it's pretty pretty close to the body itself all right I'm gonna go ahead add the hardware Add these eyelets and cut it all out. So pretty much in about 10 minutes, it's gonna look like this. All right, so 
fresh out. It looks absolutely killer all the way around. And I was a little worried about, you know, being gaps right in here. But as you can see, it looks absolutely perfect. I'm not worried about that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check. Ah, that's, that's beautiful too. All right, not even going to worry about that. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to clean up all the edges. Finally bend the wings, add our hardware, and off it goes. Um, so, so you can see my knuckle hits right here a little bit. So I'm going to hit it on the scroll saw. I'm actually going to come down just a little bit more. And then we'll go back up. And that'll give us uh, enough room. And then I'll go ahead and clean up all the edges. And we'll bend it and ship it. And all right, ladies and gents, we are pretty much ready to assemble. Uh, already cleaned it, and as you can see, we bent the wings, and we're going to go ahead and add these. If you notice, there is a indent. I put those indents so it sits just like this. So we're going to put quarter inch, quarter inch on each side. All right, and then these are half inch screws. And we'll get our special blue juice in there. Go ahead and do the other side. And that's what the pancakes loop loops look like. Such a beautiful thing. Mm. Mm -mm. Gotta love it. Especially when a plan comes together, even if you mess up and throw the wrong color on, it is still savable. Thank you guys for watching this episode. These two holsters for the FN. 510 and FN 505 came out absolutely amazing. Super happy with them. And uh, I, I couldn't be any happier. These are going out to North Carolina. Thank the Lord. Another order down. So I am super stoked to begin moving stuff. I don't know if you can see it. Nope, because it's over there. Uh, I got a massive bin full. Actually, let's, let's take a trip. So that is yesterday's orders. Or ones that I completed yesterday. <sighs> so um, more to go i'm gonna have quite a bit of uh, more orders out today so i'm looking forward to that and uh if you like what you see go ahead uh, hit subscribe and make sure your notifications on because i'm going to try and do everyday videos and we'll see how well that goes sometimes i'm extremely busy and forget to film other times uh, i may not be in the shop but i am pretty much in this building full time and a uh, huge shout out and thank you to holstersmith.com for providing everything you see in these videos. Go give them a check out and tell them I sent you. But until the next time, see you later.